and welcome back to the channel. Today, today, I've already got my hands a little dirty. Um, we are going to start the push bumper install. So, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh yeah. So let's get right into it. I've got the bumpers off. So that is the original bumper. This is gonna be the bumper that's gonna go on. And then uh, as you can see, the car is still kind of in pieces. Um, basically what I've got to do, I've got the other push bar that I have that isn't completely assembled, uh, laying underneath the car, trying to figure out where things got to go. And I've got to remove this piece of the, I guess the impact material, and then this piece over here. So I was kind of experimenting before I got going with the video to see, you know, what would be the easiest way to do this. And I found an old ratty pair of scissors. And uh, let me see if I can do this on video one-handed. It's not as easy as it looks, guys. If I could do this two-handed, it'd be a hell of a lot easier. So there we go. Um, basically, I just gotta pop this piece off, unfortunately. Um, let's see, it looks like it's kinda tacked in place. But yeah, there's a little, I guess, little piece holding this right here. So let me see if I can pop this bad boy off. I don't know if there's really an easy way to do this, but uh, it's got to just come off, I guess. Yeah, I was trying to feel around on the back side, and I think this is like a rivet. Didn't feel like there was anything that I could just take it off with, unfortunately. But, uh, there we go. So, if I think this is going to go to the way together the way I think it does, I should be able to just use these bolts, or those bolt holes, I should say, to attach this mounting bracket. Um, as you can see, there's two bolts right there that have to go on. And, uh... Hopefully this goes smoothly, but we will find out, probably the hard way. In case you're wondering why I chose to remove, you know, a block this big, if you look real close, you can see there's a score right there where they've kind of, I guess, scored it so that it can kind of bend around the curvature. Um, and that just happened to look like a really easy place to cut it. And right here, this is actually thick all the way through, but there's actually a gap there. So you can't see through there, but you can see through here. Um, so I'm pretty much stuck just removing this five, I guess, five piece uh, section. See right here, there's another gap and then it goes back to being uh, full. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one off and see if the bolt holes align. If uh, the stars align and everything's beautiful, this will go smoothly and if uh, things aren't perfect, um, this is going to get to be a nightmare really fast. So I'm sitting here cutting this piece and I notice yet another wasp nest. Goodbye. Go away. Stop nesting on the car, guys. Really? Just, just stop. It's annoying. So much easier one hand, er, two handed. Let me see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about. And that piece is off now. Uh, let me see if I can get the uh, push bumper over here with the mounting brackets and see if it's uh, close. If not, then I just uh, ruined a perfectly good uh, 
impact, uh, I don't know what you call that, impact plastic. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna test position this push bumper. It's got most of the mounting brackets on there. I've got the back side over there. I'm just gonna kind of test, fit it, see if it actually fits on the bumper, and then uh, see what I gotta do to uh, yeah, make adjustments because uh, I put enough stuff together to know that there is no perfect configuration and that most things don't fit right. So even though this came off another car, it might be damaged, it might not be right, it might have been bumped into some stuff, so it might be warped, who knows. And uh, in case you're wondering, the wraps are over there. They, I unbolted them from the side, so I'm gonna see if I can get this thing on first, and then uh, once I get this thing figured out, I'll make some measurements, um, if this goes smoothly, and then slice some holes in this bumper, and uh, then we'll move on to the wings, I guess. So this is just me kind of setting this thing in place just to see where everything lines up. It looks like my OEM bolt holes, or my OEM bolts to mount the actual, I guess, substructure of the bumper, uh, the actual hard part of the bumper, um, should match up to the mounting holes on the bracket. And then on this side, kind of looks the same way. So we will see how smoothly this goes. It looks like I can pull those bolts. And then, uh, theoretically, the mounting brackets should go on. And, uh, yeah. We'll see if, uh, <coughs> if everything lines up. And then, um, once I get the mounting brackets on, I'll test fit the push bumper. Because the brackets are probably going to have to move side to side just a little bit um, to make the push bumper fit. So, yeah, this should be interesting. Another kind of interesting thing I noticed, and I don't know if this is intentional, but Ford can ever so slightly see there's just a hair of a little cutout here. And I noticed there's a hair of a cutout here. So I'm wondering if they did that intentionally for the different bracket manufacturers so that uh, installers kind of had a an idea as to where to put it, or if that's just something the bracket manufacturers, such as Go Rhino, figured out was there and started using to their advantage. Kind of interesting, because uh, this is intentional. Like I don't think this is something that was just uh, notched out for no reason. Interesting. All right, so behind these holes are little pieces that look something like this. And in order to get the Go Rhino mounting hardware to mount, you have to get this thing to let go. Um, so basically, I just kind of pried it up a little bit and uh, slid it out. And uh, yeah, it's a lot easier said than done, but uh, I have done it now. So we'll go ahead and uh, see if I can't get this first mounting bracket on. Oh yeah. And yeah, I know the lighting kind of sucks, but that's what it looks like on the inside. It's just kind of hanging on the metal in there. And then uh, you gotta kind of get it to, you know, slide off. And uh, yeah, it's not an easy task. It's a uh, kind of a pain in the ass, but it's off now. And another thing, another thing I did to make myself, my life a little bit easier is I moved this thing out of the way and pulled these two mounting bolts so that I could kind of flex this metal and you know, pull it away to help get that piece out. Because it's kind of sandwiched between a couple pieces of metal between the mounting bracket and this thing. So um, I'm going to put those bolts back in and then I'm going to try to put the mounting bracket on. So there you go. I got those mounting bolts back in. Now I'm going to do the mounting uh mounting bolts for the bumper. Now I'm going to do the mounting bolts for the uh, Go Rhino push bumper. Alright, so I've taken the push bumper bracket, kind of set it on the bumper, uh, started to put the bolt through. Looks like the spacer is supposed to go here because there's a dent right here, or a divot. And then there's a nut that goes on the back side, same thing down here. A bolt with a spacer. 
I'm going to slide this thing in place, and then I've got these two little nuts that go on the back side. So, yeah, let's get to this. All right, so we've got the front bolts right here and here. I don't know if my hand is in the way or if I'm even pointing the camera right, but those bolts there are bolted in. And then there's a lower bolt with a spacer, kind of hard to see. And then up top, there's two more bolts. I've only got one of them sitting in place, but... Um, what I'm going to do is start cinching all this stuff down, and I'll have one of the push bumper mounting brackets mounted. And, uh, yeah, this has only taken, like, whew, probably a solid hour just screwing around with different things and uh, trying to make stuff fit. But uh, it's going on, slowly but surely. All right, I've got one completely mounted, and now i got to go over to this side and take all this crap apart. <laughs> so... <clears throat> As you guys recall from earlier, these two got to come out. The little bracket pieces that look something like this that are wrapped around the metal <clears throat> also have to come out. And in order to do that easily, I need to take those out <clears throat> so that I can kind of flex the bumper to get those little, you know, these little guys out. You see what these are, the little threaded pieces. <clears throat> so once these are out, then I can put the mounting bracket on. And then uh, we'll be one step closer to having a push bumper. <clears throat> and then of course we gotta hope that everything actually lines up the way it's supposed to and the push bumper actually fits. Yeah. <clears throat> that could get really ugly if it doesn't work right because then I'll have to do a to be continued and probably go get a sledgehammer. This is another one of those moments where you learn something as you're doing stuff. So, over here, you can kind of see how this is pushed in a little bit. What I did is I took the screwdriver and pulled it out on this one and this one. And it looks as though that these pieces should be able to slide out real easily now. Um, which is a lot easier than the other two on the other side because I couldn't see those pieces and didn't know they existed until after I destroyed a couple of them. So, we'll see how this works. <sighs> Yeah, one just fell out. Let's see if I can get the other one to fall out. And there you go. <clears throat> so, Florida Man moment. Learn something interesting. Pull a little tab, and these come out so much easier. So much easier. That'll save me like 20 minutes. All right, so before I tighten everything down, I just set that mounting bracket in place. I haven't actually bolted it in place. What I want to do is make sure this is actually going to line up with those mounting brackets before I tighten everything down to make myself really mad. <sighs> oh good, you guys can actually see. Let's see if this thing sort of lines up. <sighs> It's looking really, really close. Um, looking really, really close. <sighs> Looks like this one might actually have to come over just a hair. Yeah, this is gonna work. It's uh, lining up pretty close. And it's not perfect perfect, but it's uh, close enough that I'll be able to shimmy it into place. But yeah, there you go. Just gotta make sure everything tightens down right. Well, there is a quick test fit to kind of see where everything lies. I don't have it actually bolted down. It's just kind of resting in place, but there it is. Uh, it's starting to look more, uh, a little bit more aggressive, I guess you could say. The little push bumper on the front. Um, now what I've got to do is uh, measure this bad boy and cut some holes in it. Yeah, ruining a perfectly good bumper. Because I don't want to ruin that one. I like that one. All right, so what you guys are looking at is the inside of the bumper. It's upside down on the screen i guess you could say so right here are the license plate mounts i'm making the assumption that the license plate is mounted pretty close to center and that this is uh center here so that 
leads me to believe that this little tick mark right here is pretty close to center. And then <clears throat> these brackets from, I guess, outer edge to outer edge are 33 inches across. So I measured 33 inches across from center. So that's what those two marks are. What I'm gonna do is cut a couple holes in the bumper and uh, we're gonna hope for the best. Oh yeah. So what I've done here is I actually use like a little Dremel tool and just cut out from the inside the parts, uh, the pockets that I needed. So I made relatively clean holes from the outside. Um, I may have to extend depending on the curvature of the bumper, but they look pretty close. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to test fit this thing on the car and see if, uh, see if the brackets go through the holes. So after a bunch of bumping and yanking and jerking, um, like a glove, like a glove, I don't think I could have gotten that any closer. I really don't. But, uh, I guess I could start putting all this back together and uh, slap a push bumper on it and make y'all smile. All right, guys, the front end has been put back together. As you can see, the uh, push bumper mounts are sticking right through the bumper. So uh, now there's only one less, last thing to do. That's to uh, put the push bumper on. Oh, let's see if we gotta bend some metal around or knock things around. Make this bad boy fit. bolts in to kind of pin everything in place so it doesn't fall and mess with the other side. So oh, there you go, old bumper, new bumper. I guess I'll go ahead and crank down on all these bolts, close the hood and uh, back this bad boy out of here so you guys can see it. Uh, well, I would say in the daylight, but it's starting to get dark outside. But we'll do the best we can with what little light we have left. So there you go, car all lit up, got the push bumper on the front. Still got the crazy wheels on it. And then on the back, we got the uh, inner edge working again. Sorry about the wind. So that's it for this video. You've seen that I've got the Go Rhino push bumper on the front of the car. Next up, I'll probably be doing the wraps. Uh, can't do it today because, uh, well, I am out of daylight. So, hope you guys appreciate the video. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, it helped you see how to install one of these things. Um, if you're going to do this yourself, give yourself an entire day to mess with it. Um, I had the luxury of figuring out how to take it off the car. I was seeing some kind of weird reflection on my window over there. But uh, no, I had the luxury of taking it off a junkyard car, I'm sorry. Um, and that gave me some insight into how to put this thing on and made it a little bit easier. So it still took me the better part of an afternoon um, because when you're putting it on your own car versus ripping it off of a junkyard car, you're a little bit more careful. So I uh, started by taking off the bumper and then, you know, you guys have seen that in the other video. And then the rest of the afternoon was just figuring out how to get the fitment right, figuring out how I wanted to get, you know, everything on there and making sure it all, you know, goes on, that kind of stuff. So um, if you're gonna do this, give yourself a day. Um, and make sure it's cool outside because it's nice and cool today. And uh, I think that helped me a lot because that kind of helps keep you from getting irritated because you stay nice and cool out. So if you're gonna do it, uh, probably fall, winter, or spring, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, for me, I have to do things in the winter, especially if they're irritating because uh, we don't really have fall and spring here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the video. Love to all of you. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, ideas, um, throw them down there and uh, we will catch you on the next video. Thanks. For those of you wondering, yeah, there is actually a dare plate on the donor car, or was, and I mean, you can kind of see that it said dare. Oh, well, that was kind of interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that was kind of goofy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put my little out of service thing back on the front because with lights, I kind of look like I might be able to assist somebody and, uh, I want to make sure that I don't get flagged down because I'm not trying to stop and pester anybody.